So we are looking at the if functions in our last episode here in this Excel series. We looked at the sum if function, and in this episode, we are going to look at the count if function. So if you watch that sum if function, you know a little bit about how these if functions work in Excel. And now we're going to do it with a count instead of a sum. I'm Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, back with another Excel basic for you. So let's get over into Excel to get started. So we are doing count ifs this week. Last time in our last episode, we went over some ifs. And now some ifs, you are looking to see if they meet these criteria. If they do, you are getting the sum of that. Now with the count ifs, same thing. With count ifs, all we have to do is count the number of cells or records within a certain range that we're going to list that meet a criteria. And we can have multiple criteria. We can have up to 127 pairs. Because with the syntax of count ifs, we are listing the range. So where are we looking for our data? And then our criteria is what? So where are we looking for it? And what are we looking for? Where are we looking for? What are we looking for? Over and over again up to 127 times. So let's get into practicing. We're gonna do three examples here and see how we go, get some good practice with your count ifs in here. Now, for our first one that we are going to practice doing, we have a list of trivia teams and got all of these great data themed names here. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to see if any team scored higher than a 75 in any week. So I can see I have two weeks of data here. I've got week one and week two, and I have all of their scores right here. So for the first example, then we kind of put my answer right in here. I want to see how many teams, just count it up for me, how many teams got higher than a 75. Now, of course, we've only got, what, 10 or so rows of data here. Pretty easy for me to go through and just count the ones that are over 75. It's kind of a small number, so it's easy to count. But what if we have, you know, 50,000 rows of data? We are definitely not manually counting that out. So count ifs, incredibly helpful for us. So I'm going to put my mouse right here in my nice little example one cell. But of course, you know, I am not writing my formula here. I am writing that up in my formula bar up here at the top of the screen. And we are going to start this off like we do with all Excel functions with an equal sign. Then after the equal sign, we're going to get our count ifs formula. And so I'm just going to start typing in count. You can see all of the different count ones that we have. Count, count a, count life, count if, and count ifs. Last episode, we talked about if versus ifs and kind of the difference there. The singular if for count ifs, average ifs, sum ifs, etc., that will only give you one condition. But what I always like to use is count ifs because the structure of the singular if versus the plural if is a little bit different. So I personally, I just want to know one formula setup. I don't want to have to keep my brain straight which structure is which. So I always use the ifs, even when I'm only doing one criteria. I'm going to hit the tab button on my keyboard to select that. And then we see that range and then the criteria. So where am I looking? And then what am I looking for? So we are going to put in our criteria range, and that is going to be my entire score column, not including the header there. So I'm going to grab the entire score column, so F19 to F38. I can see that range listed up here. I'm then going to put a comma, and as soon as I put in the comma, you'll see it moves over to criteria one. It's also going to start filling out and giving me the other options as we go through, which of course we do not need to use. We can stop with one if we want to. So I've listed where I'm looking, and now I need to put in what am I looking for. Well, remember, we want to see who scores greater than 75 this week. So that is all I need to put in. So in quote mark, I am going to put in the greater than symbol, the number 75, and close off my quote. And then I'm going to close the entire thing off with a parentheses. So this is all we need to, we need to say, where are we looking and what are we looking for? 
and everything that meets this criteria, I will count. So I'm gonna hit that enter button or you can hit that green check mark. And here we go. And we get five. So let's double check this. Of course, I'm looking at all of the weeks. So I'm not even looking at this week column. So I just wanna see all of the scores that are over 75. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. So that is accurate. It is working. Most of those were in week one. I guess it didn't do as hot in week two, but we have five. So I know that's working. So we can practice this again. So in this example, I want to see, let's practice two criteria here. So let's look and see who scored 50 points or lower in week two. So we're going to have two criteria here. We want to see not just the score, but in a particular week. So we are going to have our mouse right here in that example cell. I'm going to go up to my formula bar, put in my equal sign. I'm going to get my count ifs. And then we are going to do this. Now I really can do it either way. I can set my week first or I can specify my score first. For mine, I'm going to put in the score first because I'm going to see who scored 50 or lower in week two. So I'm going to phrase it exactly the same way. So I am going to say, first off, my score is where, where's my score mentioned? This range right here. I'm going to put my comma in and then it's going to be, what am I looking for? And I'm going to see anyone that scored less than or equal to 50. So in quotes, we're going to do less than or equal to 50 and close that off with another quote mark. And that's my first criteria. Now, if I want, I could stop this here. So if I put a parenthesis and hit enter, then I'm going to see, hey, I have four that scored less than or equal to 50. So we have four in all of the weeks. When I come back over here to put in that second criteria, get rid of the parenthesis, put a comma in, and that jumps me right into range two. So the next thing I'm looking at is in just week two. So I'm going to just look at the range of all of the cells I have in E, not including my header. And then I'm going to tell it what I want to see. So comma to move to the next thing. And I'm then going to put in just the number two because I'm looking for anything that's a number two in column E. So we'll close this with a parenthesis. And now we should see that number drop from what we were seeing before all the way down to two because we only have two here this week right here and then this week right here that are less than 50 or equal to. So we got a nice practice looking to count one criteria here. We have two criteria right here. Let's do one final example. Um, and we are going to do two again this time. But I'm going to have us look for a word. Because sometimes you're like, I'm not looking for a number. I need actual text. I'm looking for a word or part of a word, something like that. So that's what we'll look for in this final example. So for this one, let's look at the trivia teams and I want to count the ones that include the word Excel in the name. So I'm going to put my mouse in. I'm going to click into my formula bar, get my equal and my count ifs. Then we are going to first look for the word Excel. So where do would I find the word Excel? In my trivia team column, not including the header. I'm going to put my comma in. And then inside of quotes, I'm going to put the word Excel. But this is very key. If you look at some of these in here, we can see Excel is starting this one, but it's its own word. Excel is in the middle. It's its own word. Excel is here, but it's part of another word. We have another Excel here, and then we've got another Excel here. And I really want to make sure that I'm finding all of the Excels, even if there is other text with it. 
So I'm going to put in a quote so we know where we're looking. Now I'm going to put in the text for Excel. Now I want to find Excel no matter where it's at, whether it's its own standalone word, whether it's at the front of the word, inside of another word, part of a word, any kind of combination that it could be, I want to find that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have asterisks around the word Excel. So, but of course we have to put it in quotes. I'm going to put the asterisk, the word Excel, another asterisk, and then another quote mark there. So it's going to find Excel anywhere it is in each of these rows. Let's close this off and see how many it finds. And then we'll add in another criteria for just looking at either week one or week two. So if I hit enter, then it's going to show me I have six names in here that have the word Excel in them. If I go back and then add in my next criteria of looking at week one or week two, of course, put your comma, select your range, put another comma in, and then this is where we could look for one or two. So if I'm looking for one, there are three teams in week one that have the word Excel somewhere in the name. And I can easily swap out that one for a two to see that there are three teams in week two that have the name or that have the word Excel in the name. So that is how easy it is to use the count ifs function. Super, super handy to use. All you need is to know where your range is, where you're looking for, and then what are you looking for in that range? Leave a comment below if this is something that is totally new to you and you're excited to put this into practice, or if you have other tips and tricks about this that you could put into play. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. That way you will be able to see all the videos as they come out. All the videos here on the Pragmatic Works channel are about all the topics on the Power Platform, not just Excel. So you learn about Power BI, Teams, Power Apps, and much more. Also, you can sign up to take hours and hours of Excel training over on our on-demand learning platform, and I will have that linked for you below. So happy learning, and I will see you in my next video.